Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we've got two keyboards that we're going to mod. These are some Igusu boards. They're fairly cheap. Um, I bought a couple of them, but these were sent to me by my name is Anthony. Um, you guys should know him uh, from our budget keeps. He does a lot of giveaways, um, and he is the the sale master. He always knows when a good sale is going on. Anyway, he sent these to me um, to see if I wanted to do some with them. I already actually had a couple that I had planned to uh, to do, um, including this one because it actually has a gold top, and I think I could do something interesting with it. But this one I'm going to paint. I was thinking of either going with a black and gold. But there's already black ones out there, so I may go with a blue. So I'm going to take the feet off, do a nice finished job on this. I think the blue and the gold might look really sharp, um, especially if I go with a dark, like a navy type gold. But we're going to see. Um, but I'm definitely going to put some better switches in here than these are Temus. But today we've got these. Right. I did put a couple of keycaps on here. Now he didn't send the keycaps. Um, actually, I believe he used them on a giveaway, but that's fine because they're really thin. Um, some of the, <laughs> some of the thinner, uh, shine through keycaps, the ones that are really clacky and, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I have a set and it was one of the first ones that actually broke on me when pulling it out. But these are the Iyusu Z88. They're called the Super Scholar. It's basically a 75%. You got your delete key here. Um, the software, as basic as it is, does give you remapping capabilities. I do know there's a new one out. I have to check to see if it actually has per key RGB. But these are, um, yeah, these are the RGB versions. I think they have a single light version. I'm not sure. But yeah, both of these are RGB, and you know they're your standard. Uh, you know, cheaper boards. I've seen them as, as cheap as $13 on Amazon. But they are three pin. And, but at least they don't have the LED that's sticking up above the PCB. So you're not going to have any issues um, if you come across. Now that's, that's the thing. When you're doing three pin or when you're doing these type of sockets, Break it up a little bit so you guys can see. See how there's there's two round sockets basically. These aren't going to work with say a Gator on Ink. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll try to get it. No, it's not going to zoom in, is it? Well, one leg is wider than the other. As you can see, they're flat and they're kind of wide. Well, they're not going to work. This is just going to bend. One leg can go in, but the other one... Now, one thing, you don't really have to worry about pushing them out because the way they come in is from the top down. But, yeah, you would be sitting here fighting forever. The only way to do it is to actually, like, clip off part of that leg. <laughs> and that's just not something that I'd recommend. But you do have a lot of... This is a Fecker Holy Panda housing. Um call this a holy polar but this one I believe should yep oh no, maybe not no the legs look fine it should work just now attempt oh no it's not in there all right that one doesn't want to go in I know the fuckers fit but I know for sure This is an Akko Holy Water. Uh, this is one of my Franken switches, but it basically is a, uh, a ocean blue. All right, yeah, that one goes right in. I don't know why this one's given a bit of a pain. Could be the legs. Sometimes it's not actually the tolerance of the switch. It could just be one of these legs is sticking out a little bit, and it's not wanting to go past the plate. 
So. So yeah, we're going to definitely need some dampening in here. Um, and I can either put some Akos in here or... So I can either put some Akos in here or I can go with some Gazoo switches. And I'm thinking maybe I will... Uh, yeah, this, uh, this fucker doesn't want to go in. Oh, that's going in. Uh, just to make sure the legs aren't bent. All right. All right. But it did go in. It was just a little bit tighter. But as you saw, that Akko went in nice and easy. Well, I can definitely figure out the switches once I get to that point. Obviously, the mods I'm going to for sure do on here are going to be tuning the stabilizers and putting some tape so that they're tighter on there as well as lubing them and probably doing a couple of wraps with the plumber's tape. Uh, for the plate I am going to dampen it uh, with some weather stripping probably a combination of weather stripping and the individual slot ones. Um, I definitely have space. I'm also going to see if I have enough room to perhaps put a, an O-ring, a couple of O-rings on the studs, but I'm not too sure about that. I'm going to be doing the Tempest tape mod, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of these at the same time. Um, I'm also, I'm thinking about doing PE foam on one and not on the other, just so that we can maybe hear that difference, but I think that would only be pertinent if I'm using the same switches. I'm not sure... I have enough of the same switch to load up both of these keyboards, so unless I unload some from an already built board, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now I do have several different materials here. I have the zip and fit. This is good for quick and easy, and I found it, it, it actually, in a lot of situations, really delivers a great um, tone. If you've seen or haven't, uh, check out my Klim Shift video. Um, and I took that three mode 65% that was on sale. When we got it, it was 25 or 27 off Amazon. And I took that keyboard and made it shine so much that Klim actually, uh, Klim, the company that sells it, actually reached out to me. Now that's a white label board, it's also a CIY um, board, the X79, I believe. I'm not mistaken but anyway they reached out to me and they wanted to talk uh, have me talk with their uh, product development team which I thought was pretty cool they were just like wow we, we had we weren't even able to make it sound that great so um, I felt that was a compliment I thought that was pretty cool so this can work uh, especially in hollow um, places now also we could do but I'm, I'm not going to do it for this um, because I've done it, I feel too many times. I'll come back to it, but the two-part silicone um, it takes it requires a little bit more cleanup. Now, granted, this does have one of those funky cases that probably would benefit from that, but it also has these drain holes here that I think would. I mean, I could still make it work, but just make for a little bit more work. So I'd rather just go with something solid. Now I do have some foam I have not tried before. This is light yet dense, um, really close cell foam. Uh, I think that this actually might be great and I'm leaning towards that as I haven't done that before. Now I did do some of these in uh, a build or a mod that I did really quick for my daughter and an item that needed to go to her, one of her school auctions. It is cork board. Now, this is pretty easy to work with. It, it cut, you can, I mean, kind of cut it out by hand if you need to. But um, on the other one, I only did one layer, but I wanted to do a couple of layers using the adhesive that they have. So that's one to try. I've got <clears throat> this, uh, it goes by different names Killmat, Noiko. Um, it's basically auto dampening 
it, it's butyl rubber. This is actually just paper that comes off and it's adhesive. Um, and if you put it up this way, it's going to, it can be a little pingy because I mean, this is like a tin foil. So um, I prefer to lay it down this way without taking out the adhesive. But this is very good at not only adding weight and substance, uh, but also dampening the sound as well, since that's what it's meant to do. Last but not least, there's this, which I'm, I really think I'm going to need to um, get a tool. I thought that I'd be able to cut it with these bigger sheer scissors that I have, or... But I mean, I'm really looking at it, and I think it needs to be sawed. And I have a, a circular saw, but I need a blade for it. So, because I mean, it's pretty thick. It's super dense. This is mass-loaded vinyl. Um, I bought one piece of it. I found for I think eight bucks on Walmart of all places. Um, so I ordered it, and I do want to use it. And I want to use it in a cheap kit, but I want to find one that doesn't have too many. Too many things to work around so that because i mean obviously i could probably drill the holes in here but this is going to be a lot of work to uh to work with i think it barely make these two keyboards so i'm just gonna i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna get to it one day because i and there's a couple of keyboards that i think would work uh better in this um there's also i'm thinking of doing a modified ciy tester uh to to get it to fit more friction style and that way I could cut off cut all of the studs out and basically just have to cut out an area for where the battery sits I think this actually may work well in that one but like I said I've got a couple of ideas for it so what I'm thinking today of doing actually just to mix it up because why do it the same right I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Noiko, the car, the butyl rubber for one. And I'm going to go ahead and use this dense, thick white foam on the other. If you guys want to know, let me know and I'll, I'll try to find the link. I got this off of Amazon. I think this was like eight bucks. And this is your regular zip and fit. I think it's made by Contact Paper Company or one of those bigger companies. I can't remember the name. I don't, I don't keep the packages. But um, this zip and fit, you know is really good but in this situation i think we can work with both of these now this stuff thankfully you can cut with you know a good pair of scissors i just took the piece of tape off the this tape was on here for a reason So I'm going to put the filler aside. Um, I've got a couple of ideas I might implement, but let me, let's go ahead and just get started. First things first, I'm going to take out these switches. Um, I could re-lube them, but I'll, I'll re-lube them at some other time and probably use them in another build. Because, I mean, Otemos, they, once lubed, they, they can sound all right, but they're just, I mean... They're cheaper for a reason. Um, so I'd rather just go ahead and either if I do uh, some Gazoo switches or some Akko switches or even some KTTs because KTTs should fit in here as well. And I have a few KTTs that I actually haven't fully tested beyond the switch tester. So let me, uh, let's go ahead and get the keys out and open these up and then kind of go from there as to what the next step is going to be. All right, we've got the um, switches um, pulled out, as well as the stabilizers. Being Otemu switches, they're a little difficult to work out, but I've been working with them for a while, so I've, I've gotten used to pulling them out for the most part without any damage. So, uh, as we can see, we don't we do seem to have some sort of uh, foam, just a little bit of foam, just a thin thing of foam down below 
Now, these, like I said, uh, at least I hope I mentioned it, these were sent to me by, um, my name is Anthony, so he may have already started, <laughs> and we're going to find something new, so I'm going to go ahead and take one of these to store the screws, let me find the right head. My name is Anthony, I already came in here and did some stuff, but we're just going to go ahead and clear this out. This is some of that shelf liner. Um, it's alright, I don't particularly like to use it because it's got holes in it. Um, let's go ahead and disconnect the JST connector. See, now this is a good JST connector, and this is on a cheap board. Oh, oh, he crimped this cable. Huh. I may need to fix that. Let me test this on real quick. Didn't even think about that. But, yeah, uh, after dealing with JST connector on a $150 keyboard, the, the V65, this is a fresh, um, it's not a... It's not a pain in the butt. I can actually put it in and take it out without breaking it or worry about breaking the, the connector. So let me, probably should have tested it before I started, but this is where I am. All right, well, it is working. I'm not sure why the RGB isn't on, but it's sending signals, so I'm sure we can figure that out. But, uh, what does kind of concern me is this plate and why it's so bad out of shape. Alright, so I was testing the other board, the one with the reds, and I just reset it and I turned the lights back on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this one real quick just to make sure the RGBs are working. Not that they have to, but if they're not, tell me there could be other issues at hand. I'm just going to kind of. Oh. Helps if I do it in the right way. There we go. Alright. I just wanted to make sure the RGBs work because usually they're on, but maybe he turned them off for whatever reason. So Alright, so we've got working RGB. Go ahead and take these back out. that seems to keep getting stuck because the tape wasn't cleanly um, cleared through the holes and this wire was also cracked. Always things you gotta gotta look out for. The tape is also that's why it was given trouble backing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tape off. That's how a JST connector is supposed to work. I don't know what final key and C was thinking about, but it's ridiculous.
Oh, the plate's not as warped, though. PCB has got a bit of a warp to it. These standoffs I haven't seen since back in the day for motherboards. It's just funny. So this one's 2019, the one that I just opened. This one's 2020. 8216 CUS V4 2020 0618. And it definitely looks like it has the um, the ability to do a uh, ISO layout. I do like it when they put the um, the water marker at the um, what key it's supposed to be. Just make things a little easier. All right, so I'm going to say the first things first. Let's go ahead and Tempest mod these PCBs. And I'm just going to be using good old, um, it's paper mache, it's painter's tape, but it's paper mache. Any other tape could include in the adhesive or the material itself something that's conductive. Uh, technically, paper is conductive, but it's not enough to conduce anything. It's not going to cause any shorts. If you want to experiment with other tapes, cool. Just make sure to put this as your first layer. Um, I shorted boards out, but not killed them, so uh, I'd rather not take any more chances. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to do two to three layers. Let me see what I usually figure it out once I get there. side LEDs to worry about so we can go all the way to the edge. Uh, these do have a lot of pokies because those are the Otemu or the Momax sockets. Try not to injure myself anymore here, but I probably will. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. But yeah, so we want to get the holes as tight as possible. Now, I don't know if you guys can notice it's pinging. It's got these springs right here. And um, they actually had more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and snip them off. Because I am going to be putting some padding in. It's already got these standoffs. So I don't think it should be any concern. Uh, they are soldered on, but... Cutting them off. Don't need another source of. Oh, it's these that are. I was like, what's shaking? These are shaking. Um, these are just a source of ping. There's no need for them. So, and I may actually take these off depending on how that goes. So, for the next trick. obviously the right side up. No. Well, we have to flip them over once we have them the right side up, but we can pretty much tell by the screw holes because they're tapered. So this is the oh. Alright, they're 
pretty much flat. Put this aside for right now. Now, I bought this one the other day, and I think it's actually a little too thick, but uh, I'm going to see what we can do to make it work. This is basically just foam weather stripping, but yeah, the um, width of it is a little too big, but I think I can make that work. Um, All right, this is looking pretty good. Before I move on, I want to just go ahead and make sure that I'm not going to have any issues with the plate because I do think I'm going to have to. I may not. Let's see. If I put this on. Right, let's stop it. So. Got a nice sandwich that we did forget one thing. E foam. most of them are on there. I think I'll be okay. I think that sounds pretty good. I mean, for a start, I think we're off to a good one. Go ahead and get Again, if you guys have any questions about how I do any of this stuff or why I do this stuff, just shoot me a comment down below or hit me up on our budget keeps and or on the Discord, and I'll do my best to answer your question. Uh, though, please just give me as much information as possible so I can, you know, give you the best informed decision because um, if I don't have all the parameters then my suggestion or recommendation or my answer may not fit the situation all right that's looking good I'm gonna set you aside and I'm gonna go ahead and basically gonna do the same thing we just did over here
All right, we got it foamed up. It's not perfect, but it will do. So let's come back over here and get rid of these springs. All right. Now let's cut out some PE foam. out of the way. Cut this wonky corner out. Of course this doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure it doesn't go too far over and covers all the switch like a little anchor for the uh, PE foam. Glad I didn't take them out. It also help to get the plate back together. All right. A little shy there, but it's pretty much under. Again, let me just not bad, but we still got some still got some ways to go. So now what we're gonna do set this over on the pile with the PCBs. We're going to fill this cavity. Now, if I cut off some studs, I think I, think I want to leave these in place, the side, or the top and the bottom, as well as like this one, this one, and I think these two as they're centered. So, if I do, so now we've got, cut that one out because it's kind of the side. I did cut that one out. All right, let me get rid of that one too. All right, this way I hope to have more room. So I'm gonna do this first. And obviously I wanna make sure to not hurt this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Just for right now. All right, so if I I'll be laying this down like this. Let me go ahead and through those holes. So this is where my conundrum lies. I can punch through these holes on the sides like that. All right, so now I need to make a hole for that to come through. So let's pull this back up. All right. See the metal sticking out down there. We put that tape there so it should protect from any shorts from the aluminum foil because that's covered up. Let me just double check that. Yep, it's under that tape. All right. Now let's make sure. It will fit. Hmm. 
cable actually doesn't have any space. That's what's stopping it at this point. Hmm, that seems to have done the trick. Now let's get this on there. done to close it up. a little bit of a bend in it, but I don't know it's, if that's because it's tight or because it was already kind of bent out of shape. But it's definitely feeling very solid. Not bad. I think it's going to sound pretty good with a tactile because I think it's that um, butyl is helping the uh, pop come out. So, let's go ahead and pull you out. All right. And next. All right, now for this, we're going to use this one. And this should be a little easier to play with. So let's go ahead and make a hole where it comes out. Uh, right here. I didn't cut any of the studs out on here. It looks like it might be a little tight. I think it'd be okay. I'm gonna cut out a spot for. I think that's about right. I think we're probably gonna have to pull the um, sides of the top like we did off the other one. Let's see. That looks like I'm going to have to cut around the studs a bit to allow for the PCB to slide over it. Some work. But you live and learn. I have not modded one of these before, so usually I try to take what I learn and pass it on to other 
you know, to the next model that I work on. Yeah, that's a that's tight, but it seems to be staying on. Surprisingly enough, but I don't know if this is going to cause some issues with the uh, switches. Yeah, it's pushing the plate and the uh, PCB too close together, so it's just not going to work. Oh, it bent these pins right down. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Okay, and carve the foam. Just trying to go around all the raised edges because it does have a weird bottom. Oh, good job. Alright, let's see. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens. So I need to make sure that I'm tightening it, but not so much to where the plate then becomes too high. And like that, I think I just need to bend it back into place. So that's actually just bent out of place, and here we have a little bit more. I 
It's a little wonky, but I think it'll be okay. I mean, what happens if we don't experiment? We won't ever learn, right? Kind of bothered that the Cletus jumped up right there, but it is working. Um, Well, it looks like we're almost there. Um, I'm going to take a break. I've been at this for oh, three hours. Well, obviously, I'm going to have to pare this video down. Um, but it looks like we've got this one working. And just to confirm, it's actually decent RGB, i got to say. But I'm... Uh, Kind of putting all my ducks on this one. I think this one's going to probably sound better than the other one. But I think they're both going to sound. Yeah, it's not not lube, so there's a ping, but with the right switch and the right keycaps, I think we're going to be okay. So, yeah, let me uh, go ahead and. Uh, I'll be back shortly and like clean up, grab something to eat, and then uh, come back and finish these up and do a sound test. Sorry about that. I thought I was recording, but I did not hit the right button. So um, I started testing here just to just to make sure that they're all making connections, and I basically just went ahead and decided that for this one, this one's with the one with the uh, Noiko kill mat. Um, you can see the uh, silver shining through or peeking through right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Akko um, V3 Cream Blues. These are a lighter tactile that aren't too bad. Now, one thing that I have found, I mean, it's not necessarily a negative thing, but um, once I got a hold, I mean, for, for some time, the majority of my switches were Akko switches and don't get me wrong there's some great Akko switches and they're a good price but as I got some better switches um, or pricier switches and not just because they're pricier they're better but ones that came better reviewed better recommended um, and I enjoyed the sound test they tend to be less clacky whereas almost all the Akkos are clacky out of the box some of them clackiness goes down a little bit once you lube them but they all just have more of a, a clacky sound now i know some people like clacky sounds so i think akko is best i prefer more of a pop like a raindrop marbles or a thud more of a thock um don't get me wrong clack is okay as long as it's not too loud and it works with the rest of the keyboard so uh, because, I mean, we are dealing with a steel plate, plastic case. Um, and again, this keyboard, I think, goes on sale for $15 or $17. So, you can't expect magic. But I think we'll be getting it to sound as good as we can. Uh, and we'll compare. See if the foam that we have in here is going to actually sound different. This one, I think I'm going to go with the Palm Brown. I haven't tested these yet um, in a keyboard. But I have pulled them out, and they are also a, a light tactile. And uh, very similar, in my experience, to the Gatoron Brown. I know a lot of people like to uh, to clown on brown, but I actually don't mind them. I like uh, browns. This is, yeah, this is very similar. The tactility on this is almost imperceptible, as... One person once said it, they're like drunk linears. I love that. It's like, okay, I like that. That I can work with that. But I don't hate them. But this one's definitely, it's basically a palm version of a brown. The, the bump is very subtle. It's right in the middle. And it's a very light um, switch. What is the force on this? Yeah, 40 grams. Really light. So... I'm going to go ahead and be putting these in the other one, the one with the regular foam. Um, and I looked at the listing, and it just said foam. <laughs> it didn't give me what kind of foam it was, so I'm not sure. But, yeah, this one's going to go in here. And 
So right now, what I'm gonna do, even though I got kind of got in the middle of doing the uh, switches a little ahead of myself, I just wanted to test everything to make sure. I'm gonna go ahead and do the stabilizers here. Now for the stabilizers, we are gonna go ahead, clip them and wrap them in plumber's tape, two wraps for each side of the wire, and we're gonna lubricate them and rebuild them. Uh, we're also going to, I'm also gonna be adding some tape onto the PCB to make sure that they have a nice tight fit on there. So we'll hopefully get rid of any rattle or at least eliminate any rattle because we are dealing um, from what I have found personally, and if anybody else has found anything different, please, I'd love to know. But these milky bodied uh, stabilizers seem to be the cheaper ones or the, the least good ones that are stock. Usually when there's a solid body color, they're a little bit better or if they just have a milky stem. But when the entire housing and the stem is milky I have found that they usually need a lot of tuning um, so we'll go ahead and be doing that here I just want to slow down one of them to help any guys anyone that's actually starting out as you can see these appear to be yep, completely bone dry so it looks like they were sent by Iyusu bone dry I'm gonna go ahead and flip these out now for clipping the legs we want to I don't know if you can see, but there's tiny little feet right here that are sticking out. Here and here. Actually, this one doesn't, this one has more of a tab. But both of these can go, and your stabilizer is going to tick a lot less. So we have basically a Z instead of an H left over. Again, look for the little foot. That's like a little L that's going down there. And you want to clip that leg off and then the opposite one to it. Like opposite on both sides so that you're left with a little Z of the legs. Now, the housings should be fine. But what happens if that, while these are inside of the stem, going like this. Oh. If you notice there's a little bit of play. Now that play is intentional, but sometimes that play is a little too much and that's what causes rattling. Now it also many times is a combination between the housing not being stable on the plate and that, you know, the looseness and the tolerances there. So what I have found, especially with these cheaper ones, what is usually best, now there is the Holy Mod, which I used to do because that's the first one that I found. And um, I would do it using this, uh, this is high heat tape. I forget the name of it. Um, but I would cut these into little strips and actually put them inside with a tweezer inside of this step. Now it works, but after some time that tape always came loose. And I honestly got tired of having to go back and <laughs> redo stabilizers after some time of use because well, it's work. And then I came across this mod, which is an older one, but I don't know why it's not more popular because even though, yes, it takes a little bit to get used to at first because, I mean, working with this tape isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world because it is quite, uh, well, it sticks, clings to static electricity and it's just very, very fragile. But thankfully it's cheap, I like a buck. A buck fifty for a roll, like I think thirty feet. But what I have found works best for me, especially with these cheaper stabs, is two wraps on either end of the wire. Now, obviously, we do also want to make sure that the wire is not warped. Oh, that looks like it might be a little bit. Go ahead and see about this real quick. I think that case is a little curved. Usually it's good to do it on the back of a phone. Okay, it's not. It's sliding, but usually if you tap on one side and it picks up and taps down, 
then it's not even. But this one seems to be just fine. So, and if it's not, basically, you have to take and turn it. Just, I mean, the slightest amount of turn. And then you want to get it flat to where it's not. When you tap on one side, it's not picking up on the other. Um, don't try to be a perfectionist. It, I mean, get it as close to possible. Um, now, if there is, if you do have a 3D printer, um, there are these two little pegs that you can, or pegs, little stands that you can print up and you can put on either end of it so it makes it a little easier when you're twisting it and then you can stand it straight up and down if it's if it's not straight you'll notice one of them be picked up at an angle so um, one of these days I'll I, I did print some up but I, I misplaced them and they're probably at the bottom of my 3d prints that I printed that I don't use but I like to do two wraps one and then two I found that in most situations that's more than enough uh, for even the better stabilizers because yes even some of the better stabilizers will rattle so we gave two wraps to this and then we make sure that we don't go past that elbow but we stay off the leg of the wire and we want to make it as smooth as possible we're going to clip off that end but let's just go ahead and do the other side i don't think that'll be enough like i said this stuff is cheap it's easier to just start with a bigger piece and you know, get rid of some because you just, if you try to do it with too small of a piece you're just gonna end up getting frustrated so set stay below the elbow press down on it get a little bit of purchase and go oh want to make sure that it stays flat and it doesn't roll over one and two all right. All right. I'm gonna just smooth it out. Try to get it as tight to the wire as possible. It may be dull. All right. Yeah. Scissors are working nice. We want to make sure to get that wrapped back so it's as smooth as possible. Obviously, don't try to be perfect. I mean, if you want to try to be perfect, but there's always going to be a little imperfection because we are dealing with tape. We just want to make sure that we're tightening up those tolerances. So now that we have those wires nice and done, I'm going to go ahead and use this, although I could use some super lube as well. Um, but this is a... Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a uh, tribrosis type mix. Um, I don't know exactly the formula. It was sent to me by a friend uh, that knows about this stuff. <laughs> all right, so we don't need that much, but we can go ahead and dip it and then try to clean it off. All right, where is... Oh. this off on here I don't have a usually I take it off with a bit of a paper towel we just don't need it soaking we just want to make sure that it's covered as much as possible and then what we're gonna do is set that right there make sure we have the stems lined up properly these two square holes are towards the top of the housing again the top of the housing is where the wire clips into so we want to make sure that we got those two holes facing up. Now we go ahead and we want to make sure that we're going through that back hole, go a bit, a bit of an angle and then clip in. Same thing for the other side. Get into the hole, then go down at an angle and then make sure to clip it to where it's the right side up. And now we have some stable, smooth stabilizers as they should be. And you can hold one side and actuate the other and you can see. Now some people like to uh, lube the housings. That's great. Um, I found with these I can actually make them a little bit sluggish but we'll see once we go ahead and put them on. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. I'm going to go ahead and do them all at once and then we'll go ahead and do the tape on. 
All right, we got the stabilizers done. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the tape. Um, now, on, for this, you can use painter's tape, but it's just not quite as thick, so you might have to use a couple different layers. I, per personally, I'm very fond of using, um, this is uh, bandage tape, uh, waterproof adhesive tape. It's for bandages, basically, because it is a little bit thicker, and I usually only need to place about one piece of it on there. So what we want to do is go ahead and cut off a piece, and we're going to cut a couple of strips, not too wide. All right. Now I find using tweezers is, uh, is helpful in doing this. Always make sure that you uh, pick up all your little pieces of uh, plumber's tape because they can get everywhere and prevent stuff from sticking. So the tape mod, this is for the stabilizers to ensure that they clip on nice and tight. And if there's any looseness, I mean, if they're just slightly loose, then using some regular painter's tape should work. But for any other, I like to use this. And what we're doing is putting the tape onto the plate. And here we have a little bit too much. I was kind of afraid of that, but that can easily be fixed. Oh, not on the switch there. All right, so what I like to do is actually hold it down with the spudger Make sure I'm getting both sides of the plate. Make sure it's as stuck as it can be. When it's smaller, it's not going to hit the bottom of the, the plate and cause you know issues with sticking. There's the other piece. All right, let's do the same thing over here. And we're doing it on the opposite side of where there's a notch. All right, just pressing down on it usually will help it stick. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a stabilizer. Wires in first and then down. Now we want to make sure that these clips are pushed all the way out so that they are attached. So now we can see that these stabilizers are nicely in place. All right. And just to test this one single one, let's go ahead and got a blue switch. And we need a two U key. I'm going to be trying these. I have a, I found a couple of bags of uh, keycaps, but I'm not sure if I have, if these are complete or not. But I guess we'll figure out as we put it together. Uh, let me see. That's not right. This is the right one. Nice and smooth. No ticking. A little bit scratchy, but... Like I said, we're dealing with um, cheaper stabilizers. Obviously, if you plan to, you know, continue using it, I suggest probably buying a new pair of stabilizers or a new set of stabilizers. Um, I personally, I have had no issues with the SUMGSN, Sumzin, I can't pronounce it. They're available on Amazon. They're usually $8.99, I think, for a set, and... Um, they include all the stabilizers you'd need for up to a full-size keyboard. So um, when I do have to replace them, I use those. I haven't had much luck with the Duroc ones. I know for a while they were like, oh, you got to use Duroc. I, I did not have luck with them. When I tried them, they, they, um, they were bound so tight on the plate that they couldn't move. The housing couldn't move. And it doesn't seem to specify what width of plate that it, it's supposed to work with. But it does not seem to work on you know your mid lower budget keyboards so that was my experience with the duroc v2 plate mount all right so i'm going to go ahead and load up the rest of the stabilizers on this one keyboard we'll finish this one keyboard up and then go on to the next one. Ah, oh, much better all right so now don't drive yourself crazy trying to make these perfect if you are working with the stock stabilizers sometimes there's just no way to get them perfect um, no matter how much work you put into them so don't beat yourself up I mean these are 
significantly better than they were stock. So if you want to make sure that your stabilizers are rock solid, then I'd say buy some new ones and make sure they're lubricated. Most of them, like the Sum GSN I can use, usually lubricated. I've had to on a few of them, just give it one or two wraps of the, um, of the uh, plumber's tape. But in most situations, looping them is more than enough. The tolerances are, are very good on those. So since I've got this one pretty much halfway built, I figured, well, actually, let me set this aside. And let's do our stabilizers over here. And for this one, I also have, I don't think either one of these sets is complete. It's a, I believe it's YMDK. Nine thousand nine or eight thousand eight? I think it's nine thousand nine. I I can't keep track of all the names. But between these two, I should have an entire set. So that's what I'm going to use for these. Let me go ahead and take out the switch. Something not using. That I was using just to test. All right. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and tape these. Well, that's the first. I actually broke the uh, stabilizer while trying to put it in there. It's a little too tight. And see all right so they're at least matching let me go ahead and stick these in here these definitely do not need any tape to be well mounted yeah that was uh interesting so let me see tape in there. This is jelly tape to try to mute it, but it was actually okay. a little scratchy, but it's working. Like I said, don't try to, don't beat yourself up trying to get these perfect because it's, sometimes it's near possible. Sometimes you can, not saying that you can't, but just don't drive yourself crazy trying to, trying to, you know, make it perfect, perfect. If you really want it to sound perfect, you're most likely going to need to change out the stock stabilizers as, you know, these are kits that are purchased in bulk. And most of the time, manufacturers are going to go with the cheapest option. Hence why most of these budget boards will come with steel plates. Though, the GMK67 is definitely one that stands out above the rest and comes with a PC plate. I'm hoping more manufacturers will follow that, as well as in, including VIA and QMK as options, if not the only software. Because, I mean, I just don't understand why they can't put a programmer to spend what would eventually be a day's worth of work to input the matrix and set up the most basic of functionalities with QMK. It really isn't that hard especially if you're dealing already with the sources and the firmware files for that hardware. All right, that's in there. All right, I think the rest of these should go smooth. Let me go ahead and do them, and then we'll be back to finish these up and do a sound test and see what they sound like. All right, so the stabilizers on this one definitely are going to have to be replaced. I think they're usable for right now, but in the long term, I'm going to need to replace them. So... Let's go ahead and clean up here. Uh, this one's broken, but we can keep these parts. For this set, I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, I'm gonna use the browns, and this is with the regular thick white foam, but I still don't know what type of foam it is. We're gonna be loading these up with the um, Akko Clean Brown, Palm Brown. This is 
custom CS Palm Brown. A very light tactile. It's palm and it's still clacky. I don't get that about these use. I mean, these are uh, echo switches. They're all just clacky even when they're not clear. But this is decent and I think it'll sound good. So, and these fit with the Yusu or Milmax style hot swap sockets. Let's let's hope that no other company start putting out uh, keyboards like this because uh, Otamu now has the, the regular hot swap sockets. I mean, it's their own design, but it accepts three and five pin hot swap sockets. So let's hope that there's all the old stock is gone. These should not be sold anymore. You should not be limited as to what switch you can use in a hot swappable keyboard. Anyway, let's go ahead and load these up and uh, we'll go ahead and finish loading up the keycaps on the blue with the Sea Salt XDA and then uh, I'll be back to close up and do a sound test. And here we are with the two modded Z88 scholars. I will be honest, um, out of all the EUSU boards that I've modified, and I've modified a good portion of, well, at least the popular ones, this one was by far the most difficult. Um, the design of this is kind of wonky. Why it has those raised areas in there is beyond me but there doesn't seem to be enough space to actually allow for a proper mod now i probably could have gone with silicone pour but that would have only allowed me just the tiniest amount because there really is no forgiving space i've modded successfully many times the z11 which is a 60 percent with a steel plate and it can sound amazing um i mean I've done blind sound tests and people were like, okay, that's the more expensive keyboard. I'm like, nope. <laughs> and also the, um, their TKL, which is the uh, K620, I believe, which actually the top cover is the plate as well. It's classic, but I can get that thing to sing. Now, this sounds pretty good, but I'm definitely going to have to, if, if I'm going to give these away as was the intention i believe by my name is anthony and by the way um i wanted to wish wish you a safe travels i know you're going out of country um but hit me up i was curious as to if you had started to mod it and just stopped or what the case was um or did you just did you realize how much work it was going to be i because i also all right, I have got four of these total. I want to say he sent me two, and I already had two, I believe. And they've just been sitting around leering at me every time I pass by because they were just in a corner where, in the hallway on top of a box. And they were just going, aren't you ever going to mod us? Are you ever going to mod us? So I got around to it. And, I mean, though challenging, I mean, I think... I think they sound pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with sound test of these, and I'd love to hear your feedback. But um, I really must say that if I'm going to do these for an Our Budget Keeps giveaway, I, I definitely am going to have to put some more time and effort. But this steel plate, it is the thinnest of steel, and it just bends out of shape so easily. So I don't know if... I don't want to give something away that's you know going to present issues. Now this is a cheaper board. Like I said, I think I think the cheapest I've seen these on sale is for thirteen dollars. I'd have to look up to make sure it's either twelve or thirteen. Might have been eleven, but I think it's twelve. Um, these keycap sets for YMDK, I believe, I paid twenty-one dollars. I'm not sure which one these are from. They could be YMDK as well, but I'm not sure. I know these are definitely YMDK. Um, these were 26, I believe these were 21 or 19, and then the keycaps, uh, or the switches, the Akko switches were 16 bucks for a box of so 32 bucks, plus say 13, so we're at 
55 and then the keycaps say another 20 75 dollars um i think there's better choices out there for that much but if for some reason you have this and you want to mod it hopefully you know this can serve as a guide either for this keyboard or other keyboards because i think a lot of what i've done here can be translated uh to either another keyboard or or just i mean a lot of these mods are common and like i said i'm i'm trying out the foam i've done the the kill mat before and this one is the oh, yeah this one is the kill mat so the black on white is the kill mat and the 9009 is uh that white uh high dense foam or uh, what's it called close close cell very close cell uh, foam it's very dense but I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave you guys with a sound test. I'll put the specs below. I mean, these are the Akko Cream Blues. These are the Akko Palm Browns. So they're both um, similar tactiles. So this one is definitely a lot lighter. Um, so I'll put these to the side so I can actually know as well. <laughs> but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If um, there's any other keyboards that you, you guys that I've reviewed here in the past little while that you guys would like me to review, let me know. I'm making my schedule and my list because I'm going to try to do at least one mod video per week, if not more. And I do actually have a series that I'm working on, and that's going to it's going to take me some time to get it done. But I think it's going to be very helpful. I'm collecting all of the common questions that are asked on our weekly thread on our budget keeps and I'm going to do an entire series where I have an overview of every chapter but each section will have its own video so hopefully this will serve as a good starters guide for those who want to understand mechanical keyboards as well as modify mechanical keyboards the the overview videos will be high level and the individual videos will go into a little bit more detail I'm going to try to be as brief but as concise as possible and i am running this by this will all be checked by the moderators and a couple of the trusted members of the art budget keeps to make sure i didn't say anything wrong do anything wrong or if i should present something else or differently um, you know like that so i'm getting feedback from those i consider very experienced in the field to make sure that i am sharing you know proper information that's the last thing i want to do is misinform anybody and i mean obviously we're all human and we make mistakes, but I do my best to come back and correct if I ever misspoke or when I'm talking off the top of my head, just said something that wasn't necessarily correct or missed up some words. Mex missed, mixed up some words. So, yeah, these, uh, like I said, these two were, were challenging. I think they sound pretty good. Um, I did check. They're all, all the um, switches are, are making contact. Um, I did not have, I don't know if that's just a one, one and a quarter looks like, because the one I had was 1.75, and it, it, it's fine on this side, but not on that side, so I'm just going with that shift, no biggie. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments. Again, if any of the boards I've reviewed lately um, that you guys want to see me mod because you have one or you plan on getting one or you're just curious how it will sound once I mod it, let me know. Um, my videos can serve as a guide. It's most of those keyboards that I have reviewed, I have kept them, unless it was an Amazon buy and I wasn't necessarily happy with it. Some of the keyboards do go back. I don't keep all of them because otherwise I need an entire separate room just for keyboards. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this Iyusu C88 Scholar that's been modded, kill mat, and closed cell phone. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.